Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under, because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks. Hold the cross high, cause we'll cap those licks. Fight the good fight with the truth. Stand tall with the truth. I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm in love with the truth. Love God, save souls, slay error. Go stronger. We're called to be saints. Don't miss the opportunity. If you're breathing and you've got two legs, guess what? You're called to holiness. Terry and Jesse show, holy hour of power. This is not low energy Catholic radio. Nope, Jeb Bush nor Hillary Clinton could have filled this seat. We're two Catholics with PhDs in common sense. This is where we engage the culture of death with prayer, fasting, and full contact Catholicism. Terry, are you reporting for duty? Sir, I am reporting for duty, sir. Jess, I forgot to tell you <laughs> yesterday when I came back from Wichita, you know how many gentlemen came up to me? Former policemen, <laughs> cops, or they were firemen. They came up and said, reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> I said, yeah, God bless you, brother. I love it. Jess, I'm so excited today, and I'll tell you why. That God has given us this time to live in. Not 500 years ago, not 500 years from now, but he's given each of us a job to do. To proclaim Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. And I just get excited every day I can get in front of this mic to say to people, hey, it's all about Jesus. That's the answer. So, That's Jess, right. let's get some soul food going here at the Terry and Jesse Show. Okay. Today's gospel is Luke chapter 9, yep. Peace. verses 28 to 36 at Holy Mass today. It's the transfiguration, and here's what the Holy, Holy Word of God said. Now, eight days after, after these sayings, now, now, about eight days after these saints, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up a mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance was, was altered, mm -hmm. and his clothing became dazzling white. Yep. And behold, two men talked with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were, who were with him were heavy with sleep but kept awake, and they saw his glory. In other words, they saw his divinity. That's what it means. That's it. They saw that he was God. Yep. And, uh, and the two men who stood with him, and as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said, and as he said this, a cloud came over and a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. I'm going to stop right there real quick. That's the most important thing on planet Earth, Terry, that Got every it. single human being that's ever lived, listen to Jesus Christ. Amen. If you get this wrong, Terry, you get this wrong for all eternity. The meaning and purpose of life is to listen to Jesus Christ. If you do, you're going to win at the end. If you don't, you're going to lose, and you're going to lose big time. Yep. Verse 30, 36, And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silence and, and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the transfiguration has about three levels of significance. The first one is that Jesus reveals his glory, that he's God, to offset the shock of his first passion prediction. The second reason why Christ, the three levels of significance of, of Jesus showing himself as God to these three apostles, God the Father's voice and the chosen Son and the cloud, that's the Holy Spirit. So we see the blessed Trinity here in action. Third, the prophets Moses and Elijah, they testify that Jesus is going to fulfill the law and the prophets of the Old Testament. That's why they appeared with him. And our Lord is inviting three companions up to the mountain, Peter, James, and John, the inner, his inner circle, 
to signify the salvation of mankind. How so? Well, remember that the human family, when you go back to salvation history, it stems from the three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So Peter, James, and John, they are representing the entire human race, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, but they're ascending this mountain into the divine presence of God. In other words, we were made for heaven. And what does it mean by, his, by when it says that we saw his glory? Okay? Evidently, Jesus' appearance, his facial appearance, and his clothing was changing. Kind of like the sun. In fact, the experience of Peter, James, and John, it parallels what the Israelites at Sinai, who they similarly witnessed the glory of God, and heard his voice at Mount Sinai in the book of Deuteronomy. And in verse 35, where God the Father calls Jesus Christ, my son, my chosen one, this is one of several times where God the Father does this to validate who Jesus Christ is. Now, God the Father never did this to Buddha or, Moh or Muhammad or anybody else. Nope. Only Jesus gets, gets that, uh, that, that declaration from the Father that this is my son. And the final thing that God the Father says to all of us, and this is, if you miss this, You'll go to hell. If you get this right, you'll go to heaven. He says, listen to him. Terry, all of life comes down to that, those words right there. Are we going to listen to Jesus Christ? Yes or no, the choice is yours. Jesse, our lady said that same thing at the wedding feast of Cana. Do whatever he tells you to do. Wow. Jess, that's awesome. Hey, I want to bring in the smartest guy in the room, Archbishop Full Sheen ahead. This is going to set the stage, Jess, for what we're going to be talking about. Bishop Sheen says, modern man is losing his soul. Perhaps what is worse, he does not realize he has a soul to save. <laughs> if he loses that, he loses everything. What Jess was just saying in the gospel. Even the civilization in which he lives. Check this out, everyone. 16 out of the last 21 civilizations have decayed from the beginning of the world until now, did not succumb to fall through attacks from without, like, you know, attacks from Russia or China. No. They fell by attacks from within, by the decay of the spirit. And you know what? Abraham Lincoln said that same thing that Bishop Sheen said. If America falls, it's going to fall from within. That's why we have to bring morality back. So full Sheen ahead, Jess. What are your thoughts on that one? Absolutely, Terry. Um Jeez, he nailed it. The, the, the month of August is dedicated in the Catholic Church to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Yep. And this comes all the way back from the 16th century, where the entire month is dedicated for special devotions to Our Lady, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So I just want to say a quick memorari for our Pope, for all those in leadership in the Catholic Bishops. Church, the Roman Curia, the USCCB. Mm -hmm. I also want to include President Trump and his staff. Yep. The, 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 the civil leadership and the spiritual leadership, uh, they're attacked by the devil big time to compromise. And so uh, in, this, uh, in this month of Mary, I just want to say a memorari uh, for all of them that our, that our Lord gives them wisdom through the intercession of Our Lady. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thy intercession was left and aided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly into thee, O virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear me and answer us. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well Are said, Jesse. Hey, I want to mention something. Last week I gave away the gospel and the acts from the Navarre Bible, and I just asked for a donation. I said, it was a $50 one-time donation, and I had several people calling, so I want to thank you. This week, I'm giving Ralph Martin's book, The Fulfillment of All Desires. It's a guidebook to the journey to God based on the wisdom of the saints. It's a 500-page book. I bet you the Romeros have it in their library, Jess. Everyone he does. And I, I have an extra copy because I'll tell you what I've been doing, going through old books. And I said, you know what? Some of these classics that I have multiple copies of, Good, Terry. give them out. And you know what? Yes. You just call 877-526-215 when I got one copy. I want you to have it. And can I tell you, last night, one of our listeners, Jesse, I gave my cell number out. I got a call at 930 at night. <laughs> and I got, he goes, you picking up your phones at this time? Yeah, what can I do for you? He says, well, I just heard your podcast. Um, I want to become a monthly donor. 
And so I say, thank you, brother. But you see, when you're available for people, I don't care if it was someone asking for prayer. I prayed with people at night. But sometimes they call to be monthly donors. So if you want this book, Ralph Martin, one of the great men of the church, layman, The Fulfillment of All Desires, a guidebook for the journey to God based on the wisdom of the saints, 500-page book, call 877-526-2151. You'd be the first one to get that book. And I just want to say thank you because what I'm going to be doing now is going through my, well, I got about 15,000 volumes of books. I'm going to, every time I get a multiple copy of one that's a great book, we're going to give it out and just ask for a, a donation. Jesse, what do you think of Ralph Martin? You've heard, you've met him. You've spoken at events with him. Isn't he a good man? Yeah, Terry, uh, Ralph Martin is uh, is probably what I would call the one of the the most solid charismatic. He would consider himself a charismatic oh, yeah. Catholic, somebody who oh, yeah. has a real devotion to the Holy Spirit and who got evangelized through the charismatic renewal. But he's what I would call a solid oh, uh, Orthodox charismatic because Terry, not all, a lot of them oftentimes oh, yeah. they go off the rails and they become charismaniacs. But Ralph Martin is, <laughs> is one, a voice to be trusted. And so he's, he's right there with the church's teachings, but he does believe again in the gifts of the Holy spirit that they're alive now. And just like we do, but uh, he's a he's a voice to be trusted. Trust me. And Father Benedict Rochelle would agree with you because on the back of the book, Father Benedict said this book is a keeper at, at, for prayer for years to come. Ralph Martin has given the fruit of years study and spiritual light to, into the great Catholic tradition. Father Benedict says get it, and I'm going to give it away if you call eight seven seven five two six two one five one. All I ask is a donation. And can I make a suggestion? Become a monthly donor. That's what we do to help pay our bills every day. Here at the Terry and Jesse Show. When we come back, yeah, this is why I had that Bishop Sheen line. We're going to talk a little bit about a solution to the shootings that have been going on here in the United States. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. We'll be right back with more to inspire you. This is Mary Danielle Barber, and I would like to invite you to join us here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina for a true femininity, be who you are, women's conference, Saturday, September 7, 2019, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Barbara Nicolosi and I will be speaking. It's $35 a person, and you can register at virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877 877- Five two six two one five one. We hope to see you at the Women's Conference, September 7, 2019. Jesus said to the apostles in Luke chapter 10, Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. According to St. Boniface, in her voyage across the ocean of this world, the church is like a great ship being pounded by the waves of life's different stresses. Our duty is not to abandon ship, but to keep her on course. May our Lord help us remain ever faithful to his church, to aid and defend her. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we come to understand. According to St. Augustine, Understanding is the reward of faith. Therefore, seek not to understand that you may believe, but believe that you may understand. May God grant us a strong living faith in Him and His divine plan of salvation and help us to believe so that we may understand. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. This is Bishop David O'Connell, and you're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Here's Terry and Jesse. 
Rated PG, praise God, the Terry and Jesse show. There's a, <laughs> it's funny, he, uh, here's a, a Catholic lady oh my God. who's manning up. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Well, that's true. She wrote a, le- a letter to the U.S. bishops where she says that she's sick and tired of the shootings. And what's the solution? This Catholic mom is saying, <laughs> she's telling our U.S. bishops, our leaders, you need to pro- promote authentic Catholicism. You think? Saying this to our bishops. Is this microphone on? <laughs> Jesse, that's it. She nailed yeah, she, it. She sa- yeah, she says, I'm so sick and tired of the American bishops, not all of them, squandering their moral capital on ridiculous moves. In other words, talking about, uh, uh, you know, hey, we can't build a wall or we have to worry about uh, recycling or the environment. Mm-hmm. That's not their job as successors of the apostles. And, and this mom is calling them out. And I agree with everything this article says. Yep. Uh, here's what she says, just a couple little sound bites. She says, after a shooting at a food festival in California on Sunday, in which the gunman killed three people and injured 15, the U.S. bishops, representative for domestic justice, called for legislation to prevent such losses. Just what legislation do you think would have prevented this, my dear U.S. bishops, representative for domestic justice? He already broke many laws. What makes you think that any legislation would have stopped him when he was filled with so much hate? Let me help you, bishops. None. Even a total ban on guns wouldn't have stopped him. He would have just simply moved on to another weapon of choice. And since it was clear he wasn't very proficient with the one he had, a knife might have been even more effective for him. And she says this. Wow. Here's where she nails it, Terry. Yep. She says, you lame people at the USCCB. You just don't get it. Instead of seeing the real problem, which is the rejection of the principle that all life is sacred, you want to throw spitballs at some other issue. Give me a break, bishops. You want to make great strides for once? How about act like if humane vitae is important? At this point, why would anyone think that life is sacred or that hell is real or that the church's teachings matters when you bishops dole out communion to public obstinate sinners like Joe Biden and others, of course, they probably don't buy it either, since you rarely bother to mention sin or the sanctity of life from your pulpits. Terry, so this is one mad mom, and I agree with her. She's, she's essentially saying, bishops, let's start preaching death, judgment, heaven, and heaven and hell, the hard truths from the pulpit. Let's start preaching humane vitae, the sanctity of human life, and maybe this is a way we could start getting these uh, these young killers uh, to quit uh, grabbing guns and 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 getting into these uh, uh, horrendous crimes. Because you know why, Terry? Their conscience is not properly formed because our pulpits have been silent. Well, mom knows best, okay? And she's nailing it. She said in in her letter, "Tell the people in the pews that all life is sacred, and that birth control, abortion, euthanasia, pornography, suicide, all this stuff." is evil. Use the word evil. Come on. The lack of resolve in this area literally is killing the flock. Jesse, do you realize that because we haven't taught Humana Vitae, how many, are you ready? I know people aren't going to, you know, the the culpability, I'm not here. I know that the culpability mostly is on our leaders in the church, but how many babies have been lost that where conception has taken place because they're using contraceptives because the flock is not being told to get rid of their contraceptives. And how many babies have died? A whole lot more than what happened last weekend in America. This is really what this woman is saying, is stop going off on tangents. Ask, this is, she says, ask parents what kind of examples they're giving to their children. I've never had a priest ask me that, Jesse. Do they make them feel that they are sacred and worth Worth it, or do they want to limit the number of their siblings because they'd rather have a more luxurious lifestyle? Have they put off having them until they are fulfilled? See, Jesse, this is what we're dealing with. They haven't been taught. And so let's take a comment. Let's just ask this mom. I'm going to call her mom because I don't want to. Her name, she's a mom. She's a true mother. Yeah. What's the difference between now and 1950 when? Kids would have their rifles in the back of their pickup trucks going to high school. And and I'll be honest with you. When I was in high school, they brought guns for shooting. Uh, pre, you know, they were going to go out and do shooting practice. We didn't have 
the people shooting at each other. What was different, Jesse? I'm, I want to tell you if you don't, but tell me, brother. A couple of things were different. Uh, prayer was allowed in public schools. There you go. The Ten Commandments was posted in classrooms. Yep. Uh, reading the Bible was allowed in public schools. In fact, in a lot of homerooms prior to the 1960 or 61, yes. they would say kind of like a generic prayer of course. Uh, to God the Father in public school homerooms. All that's been all that's been taken away, Terry, by the by the liberal progressive Democrat Party, and now we're we're playing heck. We're playing we're we're praying hell for this. Yeah. Sounds- he, he, let me quote to you, Father Bill Casey. Here's what Father oh, Casey him. says. Love uh, him. He says, Father's of mercy. He says, a survey of high school principals in 1958 asked this question: <laughs> What are the main problems among your students? The answer was one: not doing homework. Two: not respecting property. That's throwing throwing their books. Three, leaving lights on in the classroom and the doors and windows open. Four, throwing spitballs in class. Five, running through the halls. Those are the big problems before nineteen before 1958. I love it. Okay? Yep. 30 years later, the same survey was asked in 1988. And they asked, what are the main problems today post-1988? What are they? Number one, abortion. Number two, HIV, STDs, and AIDS. Three, rape. Four, drugs in school. Five, Fear of violent death, murder, knives, and guns in school. Wow, Terry. Uh, wow, we have what what what, what we've allowed. Mm-hmm. We've allowed chaos to enter into the school because we have kicked God out of public schools. You you nailed it, Jesse. Hey, Matt Arnold's on the line from Happy Hour. <laughs> Matt, it sounds like you want to weigh in on this topic. Welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show, my brother. Hey, thanks, Terry. Uh, I do. Nice to be on. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. Uh, first off, uh, Jesse's absolutely right when he said that lady was manning up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, word, the word virtue comes from the Latin root vir, yep. which means male or man. That's why virile, it means manly, right? Yep. So virtue is manly, and all Catholics of whatever sex are called to strive manfully against their predominant passions. Amen. Okay, so that's number one. So you, you, you hit the nail on the head with, with when you said that she was manning up. Number two, I called in because I should be dead. Okay. Uh, I was born in 1959. At that time, 10 of the top 20 uh, television shows were Westerns, uh, where all the main characters carried guns, and there were multiple shootings every night. (laughs) Me and every kid I knew grew up playing with toy guns and looked forward to the day when we would be able to have real ones. (laughs) That's true. Our Our dads owned guns that were not under lock and key. And I would no more have played with my dad's gun because I played with toy guns than I would have taken his car for a spin because I played with two toy cars. Yeah. All right. Uh, you, you, you really did hit the nail on the head when you say that we, we had access to guns, perhaps even greater access to guns, but nobody was shooting anybody. We weren't, we weren't blowing away our classmates. Mm-hmm. So what happened? Well, you prayer in schools. That's the big one. 1962. Completely unprecedented Supreme Court decision. They didn't cite one precedent when they said that prayer in school somehow was against the Establishment Clause, Mm -hmm. which is absolute nonsense. Uh, Number two, 1962, the Second Vatican Council, which gave us the Novus Ordo Mise, which removed from the readings of the Mass any mention of sin as the greatest evil, hell, and the wrath of God. Okay? We are kind of the last bastion against uh, uh, secularism, and they're not talking about sin or hell, even in, not even in the readings. And then we also have the, the one thing that you missed was yeah. the rise of psychology. Oh yeah, in our we are a very psychologized society mm-hmm. who true. thinks it doesn't believe in right and wrong, doesn't believe in moral evil, that people are just sick and and need our help. And so they load these people up with drugs, and then they go out with firearms and shoot a bunch of strangers. So I, I just well said. I felt like I needed to get it. No, get it off your chest. I, I love it. No, and what you said <laughs> makes total change. sense. It was the place to do it. Yeah, well, you're quoting Fulton Sheen. He said the same thing. Uh, there's a Carl Menninger. He said, whatever happened to sin? It was, it was written in the late 60s, and Bishop Sheen's nailing it. He, he's saying basically the same thing you said, Matt. Yes? Yeah, I just, uh, just to affirm what Matt's saying, I, I remember in the video, it's called a wolf in sheep's clothing oh, is yeah. put out by the EWTN. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Father Pacwa. He says that the soft sciences, such as sociology, psychology, psychiatry, were born as a result of the French Revolution 
which promote mm-hmm. an anti-supernatural bias, which says that now everything has a natural and a rational answer. And uh, many Catholics, even bishops and priests, have, have drunk from that poison as well. Yeah, well, again, we're, we're, we live in a situation, I'm going to say something that would get you in trouble if you weren't on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Oh, so good. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. We, you. You want to know what the problem is? Tell us. finger right on it for you. We live at a time when bishops will speak forcefully about gun control but refuse to uh, speak out against sin is the greatest evil. Sin control, huh? <laughs> and will will support Catholic charities that give money yeah. to pro-choice institutions. The, the the proof is out there, and and that's the problem. Yep. You, know, the, you said, Terry, the church is going to go where the leadership takes it. Yep. Where's, where are they leading us? Yeah. Doesn't look good, that's for sure. Matt, I'm going to tell you, I'm at this point, and I talked to Terry right before the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I can't, we can't be my numb robots. I, I just finished reading Taylor Marshall's book over the weekend as I flew back from Denver, Colorado, Infiltration. And uh, I, was, I agreed with what he says that at this point we have to, we have to obviously, you know, we affirm our, our bishops, the Holy Father. Authentic. Uh, yeah. But where, they, where, 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 where there's a deviation of teaching, we have to resist. It's called, uh, you know, accept. We, we accept. We're Catholics. We love the Pope. We love our bishops. But uh, if, if something is deviating from the perennial teachings of the Church, we have to respectfully resist. And so I, I like the position that he, that he uh, enunciated in his book. It's called "We Affirm, We Believe, We Respect, but We Have to Resist Where We See a Departure of the Perennial Teachings of the Church." Yeah, uh, Jesse Matthew talked about it, or uh, Jesus talked about it in Matthew eighteen. Yeah, that's you know, true. Yeah. If brother sins against you, you go to your brother. Yep. If you will not listen, you take two or three with you. Yep. Okay. And if you still won't listen, you gotta you gotta cut them off. Yep. Matt, and no? same, and Saint Paul put it into practice in Galatians chapter two when he uh, he accepted Peter, but he resisted his his error, his hypocrisy. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Matt Arnold. Again, I'll, I'll bring I'll bring this full circle and, and let you guys. Yeah, know. go ahead. Uh, it was <laughs> well because it, it's Bishop Sheen. Yes. You know that says that that uh, the church is always going to accept the the sinner. Back into the fold, but they and and the, and the heretic, but they will not accept his error. Well said, Matt Arnold will be back on on Friday, is uh, at noon, so don't miss it. And also all of his podcasts, you can get it on Virgin Most Powerful. Matthew, don't leave yet. I want to give a good news story after all that bad news. <laughs> I mean, he's oh, okay. My good news is that ESPN profiles a basketball store. She's a young a young woman. She became a poor Claire Franciscan nun. Now she's Sister Rose Marie. And check this out. She was the highest paid female basketball player in the world, and now she's a nun. She's a bride of Christ. You gotta check it out. Oh. I love those good stories. Amen. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Look forward to <laughs> having you on brother. Friday. God later. Yeah. When we come back, we're gonna shift gears to St. John Paul II Institute. Students are threatening to leave. Why? When we come back, we'll tell you why here at the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Welcome, Daniel. You're on the line. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, I just wanted to share a testimony about Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I had a buddy at work who, you know, he's a lukewarm Catholic guy, and I wanted him to start listening to the Terry and Jesse show, so I kept telling him to download the app, and he kept putting me off. So one day, I grabbed his phone, and I downloaded the app <laughs> for him. I went on vacation, and, you know, I kept telling him to listen to it. He was kind of put me off. I came back from vacation. He comes to my cubicle, and he says to me, Hey, man, I've been listening to Terry and Jesse's show, and it's great. And it's uh, made a big impact in his life. The guy, he's going to weekly adoration a couple times a wow. week. He goes to the Mass in the morning. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he's an uh, on-fire Catholic, and he promotes uh, the Terry and Jesse show on the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Wow. Daniel, what a testimony. And I want to encourage our listeners to get those cards by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and uh, do what Daniel's doing. Go out and spread the faith by inviting people to listen to Virgin Most Powerful. Daniel, thanks for your testimony, brother. God love you. You're welcome.
This is Terry Barber reminding you, there's a women's conference coming up September 7th, 2019 at the Sacred Heart Chapel. Mary Danielle Barber will be speaking along with Barbara Nicolosi. They're going to be talking about true femininity, be who you are. This is going to be for your daughters, your mothers. Every woman should be at this conference. And the way to do it is go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. CIA Catholics in action, the Terry and Jesse Show. We're going to switch gears now, and we're going to, uh, Terry, the John Paul II Institute, the students have launched a website. They're voicing their objections. Yeah to the school's sweeping changes. Let me give you an overview, then we'll... Yeah, but make sure you understand that it was 1981 when this school opened. Give it a little background, Jess. Okay, I'll give a background, you give a background, then we'll just jump into these yeah, articles. These here's here's my... From reading the articles, yeah. this this institute uh, that was, in fact, named after John Paul II, yep. takes the corpus of his writings, theology, the body, perfect, uh, marriage and family life, everything that he's written about marriage and family and theology, right. the body. That's right. And there's an entire school that's very orthodox awesome. and very faithful to the teachings of the church <coughs> that's been erected in his name. Yep. Well, Terry, it seems, as, reading, as I read these articles, oh, yeah. it, re, it, it seems like the modernists, who you, we know they have no sexual ethical standards, right. they want to take over the school and they want to destroy the academic curriculum of the school. That's the way I read it. And, and, and it's very interesting that, uh, you know, like Dennis Prager says, liberals and modernists, everything that, that they see, they destroy. They don't build anything. That's right. And this great institution, this great pontifical institute, it's going to lose its Catholic identity with these sweeping changes that the modernists are bringing in. And the students are pushing back. Terry? I, you're not kidding. They're pushing back, and they should push back. And, you know, Jesse, I'm going to be honest with you. Tomorrow, what, Thursday night, we pray for our pope, all the bishops and priests and leadership. I can't figure out why Pope Francis would allow something like this uh, with leadership to come in and just clean house of all the orthodoxy of the church because the the teachings of John Paul II on the theology of the body uh, are just so fantastic in holding and helping people know about the moral teachings of the church it, it's almost like putting the fox in charge of the chicken coop, and, and they're all going to get eaten up. And so I was concerned about it to a point where they actually, Jesse, met privately after they were dismissed. Who did they go see? Jesse Romero. No, Terry Barber. No. Pope Benedict, em- Emeritus Pope Benedict. Mm. Why did they go to see him? Because they were concerned, like, wait a minute. Look what's happening. And what does Pope Benedict do? He expresses solidarity with them. How else can he say anything else? I mean, why in the world would you want to take away this beautiful writing that's going to be in the church for a thousand years or more on the theology of the body? It just We just don't understand. But there's a lot of things going on, Jesse, in the church right now that we're scratching our head going, okay, uh, why is this guy allowed to talk about X, Y, and Z that undermines the faith? So I'm not in management. I'm in sales. But I just want to ask the question, what the heck is going on with this? Because it sounds like it's taking what the church has always taught about marriage and saying we've got a better idea. And we're not like Ford. The Catholic Church has what we call perennial teachings of the church. And this is serious matter in my take, Jess. Terry, uh, I'm I'm glad to see that Pope Benedict Oh yeah, has shown solidarity. We I need mean, that. that. That's uh, that's huge. It that's is. that's huge. What else could he say? But but at, at least he's uh, basically saying, I, I feel your pain. Mm-hmm. That's what he's saying. I feel your pain. And yep. and by taking solidarity with him, 
He's saying, you know what? Uh, I, I see where you're coming from, and I have empathy for you. Yep. That's a good sign. Uh, and hopefully this would this would uh, move the heart of Pope Francis and say, you know what? Maybe uh, it's not a good idea to reinvent this, this institute. Yep. This is not a good sign. And I'll tell you that uh, there's, there's more than 150 students in Rome. They've signed this petition against right. these uh, sweeping changes that are underway. Right. And it, what's going on, Terry, it's a shakeup. The, the, the Pontifical John Paul II Theological Institute for Marriage and Family Science, the, the faculty was orthodox, uh, is uh, formed well teaching yeah. the perennial teachings of the church. And the students don't like these changes. They're they're pushing back. Yeah, and they, uh, they, and they, they, they they have a petition that they they they're signing. Yep. And and more than 150 students have declared, "quote We want to express our greatest concern, the loss of the formational approach, and therefore, uh, and therefore of the identity of the Pontifical Theological Institute of John Paul II." And the students went on to say. Many students have expressed their immense concern after the unexpected publication of the new statutes and the new program of studies for our new institute. Together with the sad news of the expulsion of two professors that were great, oh, yeah. whose chairs have a central role in the okay. formation Holy. offered by the institute, sure. uh, close quote. And this letter was addressed to the institute's grand chancellor, Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia, and its president, Pier Angelo Sequeri, and, uh, and, and the students, Terry, they're not having it. They're not having this. Well, Dr. Monica Garel, she's a daughter of philosopher, friend of Pope John Paul II, recently wrote in the Italian Daily that this is a terrible suppression and destruction of renowned academic community. Jesse, I'm going to give an example of that. I really, really am impressed that they're protesting this because I'll give an example of the fruit, what's going to happen. If this takes place... You're going to have a generation of, of people going to this school and not getting authentic Catholic teaching, and that will undermine the faith. I'll give you an example. Back in 1966, Jesse, do you have a copy of the Dutch Catechism, brother? No, I don't. I do. I, and I'm going to tell you, brother, wow. it's a piece of trash. And what happened is the Dutch Catechism didn't believe in angels, have hell, and it got put out into the Dutch church. And can you imagine today, Jess, only 6% of the Dutch church even go to church on Sunday. They're closing churches like crazy, and this is the fruit of bad formation. That's why I'm glad we're talking about this, because we're, it's not too late to bring these people back. And sometimes we just have to speak with charity and clarity. And I believe Monica, this woman here, is really just saying, time out. This isn't right, and we want to call Holy Mother the Church to really reflect on what they're doing by firing these very holy professors who are holding the line on Catholic morality on something as important as marriage. So my two cents is thank you for standing up for Jesus moment. That's what they're doing, in my opinion, Jess. Terry, this all this all basically c confirms the yeah. the approved uh, La Salette apparition. Uh, you nailed where it. Mary warned us right. about about some of the she some did. priests and, and clergy that would yep. start. Uh, teaching perversion, yeah. and I think they want to use this institute to start oh, teaching yeah. relativism regarding moral sexual relativism. ethics. Yep. That's what they want to teach is moral relativism. Yep. But here's what La Salette says, the approved apparition. Yes. It says, 1879, yeah. Our Lady condemns evil priests. She says, quote, The priests, ministers of my son, the priests, by their wicked lives, by their irreverence and their impiety in the celebration of the holy mysteries, by their love of money, their love of honors and pleasures, the priests have become cesspools of impurity. Yes, wow. the priests are asking vengeance, and vengeance is hanging over their heads. Wow. Woe to the priests and to those dedicated to God, who by their unfaithfulness and their wicked lives are crucifying my son again. The sin of those dedicated to God cry out to heaven and call for vengeance. And now vengeance is at the door, for there is no one left to beg mercy and forgiveness for the people. There are no more generous souls. There is no one left worthy of of offering a stainless sacrifice to the eternal for the sake of the world. This is Melanie, 1879. Our Lady of La Salette spoke these words to her. Jesse, that sounds like those words can be spoken in 2019 right now. Wow. Prophetic. Hey, I want to mention one more thing 
about Ralph Martin, Dr. Ralph Martin, the fulfillment of all desire. When you're dealing in the times that we're dealing with right now, you need strong faith. I always say, ask Jesus Christ for more faith every day. But what you read is who you are. And I want to encourage you to get Dr. Ralph Martin's book, The Fulfillment of All Desires. You know, The Saints. you got to read this. It's 500 pages. I know it's overwhelming, but you need to study your faith or you'll lose your faith. This is the time we're living in right now. This isn't the time to be a wimp when it comes to our Catholic faith. So if you want to get a copy, i got one copy. Call 877-526-2151. Jesse, didn't the theology of the body... Uh, when you went to, you took a course, oh, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 I took a, years yeah, ago. Yeah, I took an, a whole week in yeah. course. And, and didn't that just unit blow you away on the teachings of marriage? Isn't it just, Harry, it just rich? It's just very basic. There's, there, I'll just tell right. people say, you know, what is theology of the body? It's basically this. It's the church's teaching yeah. going back to Aristotle, yeah. connecting with the scholastics like Don Scotus, St. Mm-hmm. Thomas Aquinas, Suarez, and Bellarmine. Yeah, all the great. Saying that everything has its proper use. Look at your body from head to toe. The eye has its proper use. Don't use your eyeball to bang nails on the wall. Yep. It's not good. Your ear has its proper use. Don't put Cheerios in your ear and, and, and let people eat out of your ear. It's not a bowl. That's what the. In other words, we have to use the body the way it was intended. Every part of the body has a purpose. And that's what it is. It's calling us back to common sense yep. to look at the body as God made it and use it the way it was meant to be used. And here's where the liberals and modernists, Terry, have gone off the rails. You know, they believe that the body, that you can reassign sex through through pills, through, uh, you know, through shots, through surgery. They believe that that sodomy is is the valid use of the human body. They believe that, uh, you know, uh, orgies, are a valid expression of, of, of sexual passion. Ugh. So the theology of the body, it, it calls this, it, it says this, that God has given us the gift of the human body for one person to populate heaven and to grow in intimacy in a lifelong relationship of faithfulness, fidelity, fecundity, and to live forever until death do us part. That's it. That's theology of the body. You got it. And why would you be opposed to that? Hey, Jesse... I don't mean to be scandalizing people, but we've had orgies inside the Vatican. What? Yes, that's how we, that's why we need to be praying for Holy Mother the Church right now, making reparation, because remember our lady said, souls are going to hell because there's no one there to pray and make sacrifices. Well, here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio, we want to encourage you to implement the the, the Fatima plan because Holy Mother the Church is hemorrhaging. And what I mean by that, we have some leadership where they're not leading us to Jesus. I'll tell you where they're leading us. That's the other direction. Hey, when we come back, we'll have much, much more on the Terry and Jesse show. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you'd like to make a donation to Virgin Most Powerful, go to our website or sign up for the Women's Conference or any of the other conferences, virginmostpowerfulradio.org. And look at the events section. And we'd love to have you come to one of our events. You'll be inspired by that. Much, much more when we come back with our final segment of the Solutions of the Crisis. We'll be right back. We got Ernesto from Long Beach. You know, I just wanted to comment, you know, and I just wanted to thank you guys. And I kind of wanted to encourage people that are listening, maybe that are not donating, you know, because honestly, I got to be honest. I used to think you guys were a little too over the top, time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. If, you That's know, right. If, if God gave us a lot, you know, and I'm, I have the blessing of listening to all this, I just want to call all the people, you know, I got five kids, you know, and I don't make a lot of money and I'm still donating to you guys. God bless you, like, brother. You're amazing. We got to, we have to do this. We have to do the extra. And it's not even the extra. People see it like it's extra. Meaning for communion, saying your rosary, saying the divine mercy chapter. It is not extra. It's what the church tells us to do. Amen. You're a good man, brother. 30 years old, 30 years old 29 years old, five kids, and I thank you guys. But everybody else, man, get on fire. Fight for the truth, man. I know what I'm telling you guys. There's I no love it. Out there. This is Terry Barber reminding you. 
There's a women's conference coming up September 7th, 2019 at the Sacred Heart Chapel. Mary Danielle Barber will be speaking along with Barbara Nicolosi. They're going to be talking about true femininity, be who you are. This is going to be for your daughters, your mothers. Every woman should be at this conference. And the way to do it is go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us. St. Joseph, Terry of Demons, pray for us. Terry, I'll tell you tell me, brother. Uh, what keeps me going. Yeah, that's important now. It's pretty important. You think? Uh, w- w- what keeps me as yeah. a Catholic Christian going yeah, even these tough is times. that our faith, Terry Barber, myself, yep. any authentic Catholic, yep. our faith is in the second person of the Blessed you Trinity, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the yeah. author and finisher of our faith. And I'll tell you, Terry, tell me. one of the things that I can't wait for is the moment when I see God, God willing, I die in a state of grace. Amen. At my particular judgment, uh, God willing, you know, yeah. I'm able to receive a plenary indulgence, and, and, and I die in friendship with God. I die free from mortal sin. Mm-hmm. That moment to me is an unspeakable moment. That I think about that every single day, the moment about. I see Jesus. Yeah. And you know what? I, one of the things also mm. that as, as just a man, as a well-formed and, and well-adjusted man, one of the things that impresses me about Jesus is his power to raise people from the dead. Oh, yeah. And, and one thing that turned my life around years ago, it just, the, the, the switch, the flip, the switch flipped in my mind. When I read a, a story, Terry, that <laughs> over 400 people yeah, that's right. have been raised from the dead in the Catholic Church in the last the book, 2,000 man. years. Yeah. And Terry, I just know one. That's the 401. <laughs> There's a guy out here named Paul Zuccarelli, a friend of mine. He, you're going to fly into the chapel. That's right, we are. This guy was raised from the dead, not in Jerusalem, here in Phoenix, <laughs> Arizona. He was certifiably dead for That's three right. hours. So for those people that say, you know what, I don't believe in God, and he doesn't raise the dead. I got a friend of mine. You don't even have to read this from the Bible. Yep. This, this guy was raised from the dead three years ago here in Phoenix, Arizona. But I'll tell you, these stories just inspire me, Terry. When you read about the Old Testament stories of Elijah, you yep. know, raising people from the dead. That's when right. you see our Lord Jesus Christ raised three people from the dead, you know, the widow's son, the daughter of Jairus and Lazarus. Yep. You see Peter raising people from the dead. You see Paul raising people from the dead. You see the Blessed Virgin Mary being assumed into heaven, body and soul. You got the testimony of the early church. So many people, Terry, who have raised people from the dead in the power of Jesus' name. St. Ambrose raised people from the dead in <laughs> Jesus' name. St. Hilary of Poitiers Praise raised God. people from the dead in Jesus' name. St. Irenaeus raised people from the dead in <laughs> Jesus' name. St. Augustine, St. Martin of Tours. St. Martin of Tours raised three people from the dead That's in right. Jesus' name. You got St. Benedict who raised people from the dead in Jesus' name. You got Pope Gregory the Great who gives testimony of seeing people raised from the dead in Jesus' name. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, yeah, oh, he's a great who raised people from the dead. St. Anthony of Padua raised people from the dead in Jesus' name. Blessed Margaret of Castello right. raised people from the dead in Jesus' name. St. Elizabeth of Hungary, St. Catherine of Sweden, St. Colette of Corby, St. Zita, St. Francis of Rome, St. Joan of Arc. Terry, the Catholic Church, when it's practiced, when people pursue a life of holiness, it's amazing. And I'll tell you what's more important than raising somebody from the dead. God willing, all of us experience that at Judgment Day at the hands of Jesus. I'll tell you what's more important than raising people from the dead. Tell me, brother. It's raising a sinner from the dead. It's getting a sinner from the darkness of mortal sin right. on his way to hell and raising him from the dead through the sacrament of confession. That's the greatest thing that we can do for another fellow Catholic. And Jesse, I repeat what Our Lady of Fatima said about souls going to hell. 
many times they're going there because the graces aren't there. Why? Because no one's willing to make sacrifices and they pray for those folks. Jesse, you named so many. Let me just give one. I won't give. Jesse's got a list. I've said, let me just give you an example of a holy monk, St. Marcarius, a holy monk living in the desert of Egypt. He encountered a man who didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. I love this, Jesse. He goes, hey, bro, hey, dude, sit, come here. In order to convince him, the saint invoked God's power over a dead man, and he was raised back to life. The miracle spread throughout the Egyptian desert. Jess, here's the thing about it. Miracles are taking place today. Not this 500 years, 1,000 years. In the years. midst of sin, Terry. Where, where sin exists, grace abounds, St. Paul said. And, you know, e- yep. yeah, and even with all the challenges we're faced in the church right now, I want you to keep your eyes you know what, yes, my crucifix, keep the eyes on Jesus and him crucified. Last time I looked, I don't worship a priest, a bishop, or the pope. I worship Jesus Christ. And you know why? He's the way, the truth, and the light. And we need to reaffirm that. And I want to recommend every single person listening to ask Jesus Christ for more faith every day. Because if you're not asking, you're going to be a casualty. I guarantee it. You need strong faith to get through the times that we're living in. Yeah, Terry, one of the great books that that's it's one of those yeah. it'll it'll re it'll reinvigorate your soul. It's a book called Raised from the Dead. I love that by book. Father Albert Hebert. I it's have put it. out by Ten. Ten, baby. <laughs> it's the true stories of four hundred resurrection <laughs> miracles. And I'll tell you, one of the most people don't realize that one of the greatest saints yeah. that had this this charismatic <laughs> gift of raising people from the dead was Saint Vincent Ferrer. Oh yeah. It's it's testified that St. Vincent of Ferrer, get this, don't fall off your chair. Are you ready? He raised 28 people from the dead Unbelievable. In, in his life, in his, in his priestly ministry, awesome. in the name of Jesus. Wow. And notice all these saints that raised people from the dead, it's not in the name of Muhammad, not in the name of Buddha, nope. not in the name of Confucius, right. not in the name of Gandhi or Zoroaster. It's all in the name of Jesus. And as Catholics, uh, when, when you think about the fact, can you imagine one day if we die in a state of grace, we're going to live in a place called heaven? Yep. And one day at the general judgment, Jesus is going to raise our bodies up from the grave. Praise God. He's going to unite our bodies and our souls in heaven forever. Yep. You will have a glorified, immortal uh, Im- impassable, and that means your body will never suffer, never age, forever and ever. You will li- live in a land in our Father's house of perfect love, of perfect beauty. And guess what the Bible says about heaven? There's no nighttime. There's no darkness. Right. And in heaven, there's no hate. In heaven, the only theological virtue that every single saint exercised perfectly, they exercise caritas, charity, love. Let Jesse, you got me all excited, and I know that my masses that I've heard reverently will be the greatest consolation at the time of my death. And so what am I suggesting our listeners to do? Get to Mass, get to confession, get your adoration in, pray the rosary every day. This is the game plan that we give because we want to see you in heaven. Last time I looked, Jesse, there's an expiration date on every single birth certificate listening right now. We're all, nobody gets out alive. So why do we focus this last segment on hope? Because our own hope is in Jesus Christ. And we, we want to entrust ourselves to him and ask him every day, Jesus, what do you want me to do today to help somebody come closer to you and myself? And I want to just remind you, Living in the presence of God is the key to surviving right now, right here, at this time of history. And God is calling you to be that faithful servant by sanctifying the temporal order. Be a good dad. Be a good mom. Kids, get your homework. Work. Do your duty because God's will is manifested moment by moment as long as we're fulfilling our duties in our state and life. And right now on Virgin Most Powerful, listening to your two spiritual fitness trainers, we have one goal. Get you to heaven. That's right. You know, I'll tell you, instead of thinking macro, like you're going to fix the world and fix the church, we got to think micro. That's right. If we fix ourselves, that way we're going to fix the church. Did you catch that? Yeah. If you fix yourself, that way you're going to add to fixing the church. Yep. 
that the modernists have tried to demolish and destroy. So how do you fix yourself? Let me give you a, a layman's quick guide to St. Thomas, okay? I love it. The moral life, okay? This is the moral life. What is it? Okay? Do good, avoid evil. Simple, St. Thomas. Straightforward. Do good, avoid evil. Repeat that to yourself several times a day. It's very simple. Do good, avoid evil. This is the moral life for Catholics. And begin by doing small things well. Actively try to form your conscience by reading good books that form your conscience. The Holy Bible, the Catechism, good spiritual books. Terry's written some. I've written some. There's a lot of them out there. The Baltimore Catechism. Seek the truth. Form your conscience and do not, don't darken your intellect with garbage, with sin. Don't be looking at stuff on the internet or on television that you know is sinful, that's going to be just embedded in your mind throughout the day. And, and also, submit your passions, which are the lower faculties, submit them to right reason. Do this every day, 365 days a year. And if you fail, you fall into sin, get up, go to confession, say an act of contrition, and get back to it, to forming your conscience and to living a moral life. And guess what? 40 years from now, when you're old like I am and Terry, you know, we're, we're, we're considered like the elders or we're like the generals right. of, a, of an army. And we're in a tough spot right now. Well, guess what? If you keep on living the moral life, do good, avoid evil, yep. live in a state of grace, then and only then will you know what to do and when to do it because it becomes habituated. Here's a term. Baltimore Catechism, we want to habituate our soul to do the right thing, right reason, right action. How? Habituate. What does that mean? It means keep doing things over and over repetitively. You habituate, you habituate, and you order the soul. And the ability to make that right decision, it begins with the ability to make small right decisions every day. Terry? Jesse, I'm excited, and I'll tell you A little you why, Thomism brother. there for yeah. the end and of the show. Talk about Thomism. Father Brian Milady will be here tomorrow on Jesus 911, and he is one of the greatest Thomists I, on I the think planet. on Thursday, Thursday, Terry. Oh, I'm sorry. Richard said to, tomorrow. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, no, Ruben, Ruben's on on Thursday. Okay, on Thursday it'll be then. Yeah. You, you won't want to miss it. Now, up next, the Bible with the Barbers. I'm going to join my wife. We're going to talk about the beautiful teachings that our church teaches through God's word. Jesse, I want to just say that in a couple of weeks, we're, you and I are going to be with Father Donald Calloway at a Divine Mercy uh, thing out in Marietta, California. I think it's uh, two weeks from now. And if it's on your website, go to jesseromero.com. We'd love to meet up with you. Can you imagine Father Calloway, Jess Romero, and myself talking about Jesus and the Divine Mercy message? We, we love doing that. And I just got to make one more comment about Father Calloway. When I get his three talks from the Wichita Conference, folks, I'm going to make it available to our monthly donors as something free. So you want to become a monthly donor? Call 877-526-2151. Yes, we end it always the same way, bro. What state should we be living in? State of grace. No other state to live in. I know there's 50 states in this country. It doesn't matter where you're at physically. It matters where you're at spiritually. Your soul, state of grace. Don't live in a state of mortal sin. Repent right now. Do an act of contrition if you're in mortal sin. Right now, when you when we finish this get, show, get, down on, your get on your knees and do an act of contrition and then get to confession as soon as possible. You know, people tell us, Jesse, they like us because we're very direct. You know why? We don't have time to be pussyfooting around. You know what we have time to do? Help you get to heaven by following Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Here at Virgin Most Powerful, Charity and Clarity are here. Up next, Mary Danielle with the Bible with the Barbers. Jess Romero, thank you for telling me what you really thought. This last segment got me ready. I'm going to go do some push-ups right now. (laughs) Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And I want to thank our listeners for supporting Virgin Most Powerful because we couldn't do it without you. May God bless you and your family. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to Thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou Thyself maintain them in holiness. O Divine and Great High Priest, 
May the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us. <laughs>